great 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 grandparents they would know all of what these words mean mm. not in the not in the literal sense but what he is referring to so these come from the understanding <clears throat> These come from the understanding of how, um, how the awliya Allah work. So these are uh, titles given to certain saints. Uh, now I'll read a hadith out to you and there are many, many, many a hadith talking about these concepts the spiritual workings of creation. So we are very familiar with how creation works from the material realm or from the mulk, right? But we are not very familiar with how creation works from the malakut, from the unseen or the mystical realm, which the prophets are far more familiar with, alayhum salam, they were, and the awliya Allah are familiar with because they have an entry into the malakut. So one of the hadiths that talk about this, and many modern people don't know these are hadiths, right? Um, or, will they, or will dispute them, but I, I'll read it. Um, so one is from uh, Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud, who reported that the blessed uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Alhamdulillah, uh, God the Exalted has on his... So that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah the Exalted, Allah Azza wa Jalla, has on his earth 300 whose hearts resemble the heart of Adam, 40 whose hearts resemble the heart of Musa, 7 whose hearts resemble the heart of Ibrahim, 5 whose hearts resemble the heart of Jibrail, 3 whose hearts resemble the heart of Mikail, uh, and 1 whose heart resembles the heart of Israfil. Whenever one of, one of these ones dies, God replaces him with one of the three. Whenever one of the three dies, God replaces him with one of the five and so forth. Hmm? And one, whenever one of the three hundred dies, God replaces him with one of the common people. It is through them that God the exalted relieves the community's afflictions. This is Hadith Rasul Salam. And there are many other hadith giving different variations on the same the same message so everyone knows israfil mikhail jibrail these are these are the great angel the great angels the, some of the greatest angels so what does this mean so what he says rasul wasalam, is that after the anbiya allah who was sent from the first human being to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, and even during that time, there will also always be people on earth whose hearts are like this. So we know a little bit from what we learned in this surah, what type of hearts do these people have? The heart of Ibrahim is Khalilullah, the intimate friend of Allah. The heart of uh, the other prophets, pe people who have a heart, Qalbul Salim, a heart in Taslim, Qalbul Munib, a heart in Ainaba, in reversion, a heart close to Allah. Right, so um, so some of the interpretations of this hadith, and I, I will only talk about this. There are many, many ahadith given the same types of meanings. Is that that there are always people on the planet who Allah has chosen to be in a state of His worship, and by them, as Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us, the afflictions of the communities. Uh, is removed. Uh, so we say, uh, and there are many, many uh, awliya Allah who existed before. They will talk about these hadith and explain them. Uh, actually, if you read Ibn Arabi, uh, Sheikh Al Akbar, Imam Haddad, uh, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani speaks about them a little bit. Uh, Sidi Abdul Aziz at the Bagh, who lived very recently, he speaks about them. Many of the awliya also do not talk about them, for whatever reason. Uh, uh, but that these are the rankings of the saints, and they control 
the affairs of the world right uh, and they have rankings among them right that there are this and then over them and over them and over them um, of course this ranking was present in the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam right because muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was you know that's him <laughs> and then he had around him his closest companions he had the ummahatul mu'minin his wives who were also his advisors and confidants right and they had below them and below them and below them and so forth the generations kept inheriting from those who had gone before and since the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our knowledge is getting more and more and more diluted because the time is passing and this is how it is right the more time passes the more things get diluted also our mental capacity we say is decreasing i think we ourselves understand that that our memory is not as good as our grandparents memory right and children nowadays their attention span is very short and their memory is very difficult right because this is the nature of what is happening in society so we say nowadays it's very rare to find a scholar who can even remember one tenth of what the what the people after the prophet used to have in their memory they had just amazing memories so we are struggling and the time is passing and this is actually we have been in a very long time without a prophet among us now we are in the year 1441 this month 14 centuries since we had a prophet living with us so long time so if you remember the time before muhammad only 600 years and they had another prophet from isa alayhi salam before that musa alayhi salam and there might have been other prophets we don't know because it was only after muhammad last for everyone no more right at other times there were people ibrahim alayhi salam's time lut alayhi salam was living very close by right they always lived in so this is a this is a very difficult state that we are in and uh uh hence things are getting harder and harder in the world but it is not unexpected it is what the prophet alay salatu wasalam told will happen because he is a prophet he prophesizes this is what will happen so it's good for us to recognize that and then we try our best to keep going and these saints came after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad right as the people who control what is going on in the malakut and because they control what is going on in the malakut they control what is going on in the mulk so obviously the first among them after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was Sayyidina Abu Bakr he was a great saint right the greatest of the awliya and then Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Uthman Sayyidina Ali obviously the ummahatul mu'minin had an amazing insight into the malakut right this is why they were great teachers and our mothers and so forth but it keeps getting diluted uh, i don't know you would have heard the hadith where rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said not a hundred years will go past except there will be a renewer who comes to renew the deen a mujaddad the renewer right is that familiar hadith that's that's a more familiar hadith these these most modern people don't know hadith like this but the mujaddad is someone who allah says every 100 years will be born in your community somebody who will come and renew the deen he will bring back new life into it because we're struggling allah will not leave us alone here to struggle for long this is not allah's way anyone who knows allah will know no he will not do that he doesn't create give you a book give you a message and I'm out. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> right? Always there. Always closer to us. You know, this main artery in Surat Kaf. We went through that. Always there. So he will keep sending. Keep sending. Of course, they will not have the rank of the prophets. This is, as it is written. Because Muhammad was enough. We say Muhammad is like all the Anbiya. Together. Right? All the Awliya Allah is like one prophet. so forth and all the common people is like one awliya right so um, so we have muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then we have the awliya after him the mujaddad is the renewer who will come once a hundred years to renew the faith normally we won't know who he is until he has died then when we look back in our history we say ah that person had such an impact on the muslim ummah Uh, that they renewed people's iman 
right? Normally, there'll be two or three people that the scholars will say, oh, such and such, they become giant figures. Uh, I think in most of you are familiar with Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani. He is considered one of the people who renewed the faith. Imam Ghazali is considered someone who renewed the faith. Very interesting their lives. Imam Ghazali, when he left Baghdad, remember we talked about this story, you were not here, but we talked about how he was taken away. Allah took him on this journey when he had to confront his heart after being a great scholar from the brain. <laughs> he had to confront his heart. Allah took him out of Baghdad on this 10-year journey. Remember we talked about that? That was the year Allah brought Sheikh Abdul Qadir into Baghdad. It's very interesting how Allah does things with uh, with human history. Mm. Uh, Imam Haddad is considered one of the renewers. He lived two or three hundred years ago. It's good to learn about these people. So many people understand the Mujaddad and accept that from the Mulk, that there is somebody who came and through their life, their achievements, their, their output, their presence, they were able to rekindle Iman in the people. Uh, what Rasul Alaihi is teaching us is they did that in the mulk, but also in the malakut. They have a very high place with Allah, and they have a ranking, and they have a job to do. That job must be done. If you are chosen to be one of them, right? It's a difficult thing to be chosen. You know, none of the prophets, none of them wanted it. What did Rasul Alaihi do when Jibrail Alaihi came? He ran away, he ran away, because he knew, if I am chosen to do this, my life will be hard, right? You will face hardship, mockery, scoffing, all sorts of things will be said, said to you, thrown at you, and from often the people closest to you. But you do this for Allah, this is, this is the way. So this is why we are so grateful to them for what they did and what they sacrificed and suffered. And we should also be grateful, not just to them, but for all the awliya who came after them, right? And in our history, we had that gratitude and we had that connection to people who could understand what is going on in the ghaib. So we were safe. By that, we were safe. I know yeah, in our country, in Sri Lanka, we were safe. Because at least, because we 